tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. The world pitched and bobbed underneath Kimberly's feet. Her white knuckled grip on the rail was the only thing keeping her from tumbling from her unsteady stance and giving in to the nauseous uprising in her gut. What's the matter? A mocking voice called out. You gonna puke? She refused to answer. Opening her mouth might have done her in entirely. Seriously, Alex. Crowded waters and more untapped fish stocks. He had settled with a rural brine pit aptly named Hell's Gulf. Kimberly laughed when she heard its name, but the laughter faded away when she googled it and found only one article about the town, concerning a grievous hate crime from the early 90s where four men had beaten a woman and her teenage son to death. When she brought this up to Cameron, he'd brushed it off. That was the past. And besides, that was only one incident. Yeah, but if that made it out, think about what else might have happened there that we don't know, she'd replied. It's only for three days. We'll be fine. Was his response. Sure enough, the first day at the rental house had been fairly uneventful, save for the following night where Alex brewed some concoction for themselves he'd called zombie juice. Kimberly remembered tasting lime and not much else, and moving on to her third cup before she saw the empty bottle of Everclear in the trash and realized the truth. The blackout came not long after that. The pounding headache the next morning, plus the subsequent seasickness later that day was as her mother would say, nature's way of saying I told you so. Eventually, they arrived at their spot, the mouth of a tidal creek that snaked far up into some grassy marshlands. Alex dropped anchor about a hundred feet from the opening and readied the fishing gear. After trying on some lures that looked like red and white snap clips, called spoons for some reason, he and Cameron cast off the starboard side towards the creek mouth. Kimberly found the shadiest part of the boat and grabbed a beer from the cooler. Her stomach still wasn't sitting well, but she recalled beer had been on the menu before the amnesiac zombie juice. Hair of the dog that bit you, as her father would say. It really is quite nice, she thought. The bobbing waves were pleasing now, and the sunshine was warm, not scorching like high summer. It could have been peaceful, save for the occasional cursing and banter from the two guys on the boat. She looked back off the port side out at the wide open sea. She wondered if she might see a dolphin. That's when something surfaced just five feet from the boat. Kimberly stood and leaned over the edge, scrutinizing the object. What the? She whispered, stretching over the rail and reaching out. The tide pushed them in close, and she pinned it against the side of the boat before pulling herself back in. Up close, there was no doubt. Hey, she said. They were too busy squabbling over which knot to tie a lure with. Hey, she shouted. Cameron turned and saw what was in her hands. No way. Are those? I think so said Kimberly as he took them from her and examined them. Are those your sunglasses? Alex asked. For sure. Cameron replied. I thought they were lost like a mile back. How did they... I don't know, she said. Well, awesome. Now I can see through the glare. He said, sticking them on his face. Tell me if that thing down there's a stingray then said Alex, pointing. I want to try and snag it. You're welcome, Kimberly commented before sitting back down. Her irritation was only tempered by confusion. There was no way any waves or currents could have pushed the sunglasses all the way back to their boat, and she was sure she'd seen them fly off and land in the water at least 50 feet off, unless someone or something put them there. Regardless, soon she felt a new kind of pressure. 
the urge to respond to the call of nature. She looked around the boat for a moment before shaking her head at how foolish the thought was. She could hear Alex's response. You think we really got a bucket on board for pissing in? Just go in the ocean. That's what we all do. So she swung her legs over the railing and lowered herself into the water. She let herself drift away from the boat, somewhere she could feel more isolated. After she was finished, she kicked off back to the boat. As she stroked, her head submerged for a moment. Barely there. Not even a polyp. Kimberly halted with a gasp. That raspy whisper had been clear as day, but she was alone in the water. It could have been one of the guys, his voice carrying. She quickened the pace and swam faster, her head going under once more. You couldn't blow a sea sponge, you scallop fucker. You want me to cut you again? She yelped and splashed for the boat, grabbing onto the stern ladder and hoisting herself up. The voices hadn't been around her. They were underwater. Got it! I hooked it! Alex was shouting. It's coming off the- Wait! Uh, oh! Are you serious? It's a goddamn hubcap! Nice one. Is that your personal best? Cameron quipped. You told me it was a ray! Hard to tell when they're halfway buried like that. Guys! Kimberly interrupted. There's something in the water! Alex blinked dimly at her. Well, yeah, it's the Gulf of Mexico. There's a million things in these waters. No, I meant something spoke to me. Cameron turned to her. What do you mean? Something in the water spoke to me, she repeated, gesturing at the tranquil ocean. Like a person. Alex raised an eyebrow. Kimberly forced herself not to look at him. And... what did they say? Cameron asked. Something about... Her face flushed. Polyps, I think, and... She couldn't meet their expressions. Never had anything in her life so terrifying also sounded so incomprehensibly ridiculous. I don't know what they were talking about, she blurted. That's all I heard. Alex stared out to sea like a seasoned sailor. So? He growled in a faux pirate voice. There be polyps about. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Said Cameron, shaking his head. Polyps? That's all I heard. Kimberly snapped. They jolted at her outburst. Sheesh, I'm sorry. Cameron mumbled. Alex simply glared and looked away. Well, do you want to move on? Cameron offered. We're not getting much luck here anyway. Yes, she agreed. Let's go somewhere else. So Alex retrieved the anchor and ignited the engine, piloting the boat north past the creek mouth. Kimberly settled back in her seat, silent and brooding. That flash of anger was simmering away. It left her feeling high-strung. Guilty. Cameron's sunglasses, now secured around his neck, seemed to stare at her. Something definitely found us the first time, she thought. No reason they won't do it again. As they drifted to a stop at their next spot, a sandy peninsula jutting far from shore, Alex gazed at the dashboard and frowned. Hmm. He grunted. Problem? Asked Cameron readying his fishing pole. We're at three quarters of a tank. He commented. It shouldn't be that low. I could have sworn I filled up at the ramp. There an issue with the engine? Cameron inquired. <sighs> Maybe. Alex mumbled. Yeah, I think so. Kimberly's heart sank. It had been nice to get out on the water, but cutting the trip short on the back of engine problems and disembodied voices would not add up to a good time. Alex keyed the ignition. The engine crackled and sputtered. The smell of fuel and burnt plastic shot through the air. Ah, shit! He cursed. Shit! Rushing to the stern, Kimberly stood and looked over at the stern. 
Behind the boat was a growing slick of gasoline, an oily rainbow in the sun. Black smoke belched from underneath the engine. Extinguisher! Alex shouted. In the compartment, at the bow! Get it! Kimberly rushed to the front of the boat and tore open a lid situated in the floor. She sifted through life jackets, pool noodles, cobwebs, probing the expansive depths for the extinguisher. Hurry! Alex urged. Kimberly practically threw herself into the compartment, throwing things out of her way to look for the- Jump! Get off the boat! Kimberly! Someone grabbed her shoulders and hauled her out of the compartment. Jump! Cameron yelled, pushing her to the port side. As she sprung off the cushions and into the water, she caught a glimpse of bright orange flames geysering from the stern before going under. Raw instinct took over and she breaststroked through the cool, murky water, away from the inferno. A full ten seconds passed before she finally surfaced and looked behind her. The entire back half of the boat was consumed in fire. It spread beyond the stern and into the sea, forming a burning wall across the surface. Cameron and Alex emerged near her. God damn it! <laughs> Alex roared, smacking at the water. Son of a fucking bitch! <clears throat> what the hell happened? Cameron shouted, treading frantically. The fuel line! <laughs> Alex yelled and lashed his arms again. Oh, motherfucker! God! <clears throat> he wheeled towards Kimberly. What the fuck took you so long? And we could have put it out! I didn't see it! She protested. I looked all over for it! It was in there! I swear I tried! Alex, shut up! Cameron shouted, getting in between them. Let's get to shore first. Then we can point fingers. Alex huffed, but he kicked off, giving the burning wreckage a wide berth. Cameron was next to follow, reluctantly. Kimberly swam off with more vigor. Being in the water was the last thing she wanted, even disregarding the smoldering boat. A piece of debris was in her way. She submerged to avoid it. Where are you going, pretty girl? <sighs> and suddenly, a grip like a bear trap latched onto her shin, dragging her away into deeper waters. She screamed, flailing for the surface unable to see through the silt and coursing bubbles. The teeth sinking into her flesh were short, blunt, and powerful. Seawater rushed past her form, battering her skull from the force, shooting up her nose. It finally let go. Kimberly spiraled underwater for a second before righting herself and bursting at the surface, gasping for air and expelling seawater. A hundred feet off, Cameron and Alex were propelling themselves for her, their labored breath audible from even so far away. She backstroked towards them, her shin searing, trying not to splash too hard. It seized her under again. You're never touching land again. Stay with us, pretty girl. Quit hawking her fuckface. Let me have a taste. Enough. 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 Incredibly, it let go. Kimberly kicked up again, the skin on her leg shredded and stinging from the salt. The pain was bad enough for tears. The guys finally caught up with her as she coughed and choked. Come here! Cameron urged, reaching out for her. The creature emerged in between them, and Kimberly nearly screamed. It was a dolphin, horribly mutated, with bloodshot maniac eyes, a rosette of crooked teeth and greasy black hairs trailing from its head. As it passed them by, they gawked at its emaciated body, leprous skin, and torn trident-shaped tail. What the hell? Alex shouted. One of its eyes focused on Kimberly, and its ragged lips curled into a grin before it submerged. As Alex, Cameron, and Kimberly converged, a wake formed around them in a circle. 
three curved dorsal fins stuck out. They were trapped. What's wrong with them? Cameron hissed, watching a fin glide past him. I don't know, Kimberly whispered, but it all made sense. The voices, the sunglasses, and horribly the boat engine. Some invisible sonic force pounded into them from underwater. They jolted, their flesh trembling on their bones. Kimberly suddenly understood. They're talking. It's echolocation. We can only hear them underwater. They were the ones talking? Alex yelled, flinching at a fin that got too close. What do they want with us? Said Cameron. Kimberly took a breath and, holding onto Cameron's arm, submerged. She opened her eyes. The water was dark and murky, lined with gold specks. But the dolphins were shadowy silhouettes just beyond the edge of her sight. Hello. It's been a long time since these waters were blessed with such beauty. Such tenderness. Ripe with potential. Kimberly's voice was a muffled explosion of bubbles. What do you want? The laughter that followed was cruel and grating. You. She panicked and resurfaced. Cameron and Alex gaped at her with wild eyes. They want me, she stammered. Huh? Cameron spat, shifting in between her and the encircling fins. Oh, shit! Alex blubbered. They want to, you know, assault you! What? Kimberly shouted. Dolphins are rapists, man! He explained. They're not fun or friendly. They assault and kill all the time. What the hell are you talking about? Said Cameron. They do it all the time. You ever seen those videos of them humming people? They're psychopaths, Cam. These aren't normal dolphins. Cameron seethed. I don't know what these are. He suddenly jumped. It bumped me. It bumped my leg. Alex spasmed too. <laughs> Shit! Get away! He slapped at the surface again. Kimberly submerged. Why do you want me? She demanded. One emitted a series of clicks that could have been snickering. Why? It's because you're so smart and funny. You're my forever girl. You've got a brain. I want her brain, and her heart, and liver. Focus. Stop thinking with your guts. That was uncalled for. Your mom was uncalled for. She resurfaced to draw a breath. Amid the fear, there was a splinter of indignation. Why are they acting like such assholes? What are you doing? Cameron whispered. Are you speaking to them? Uh, yes, I, I know, I know it's fucked up, but just hold on to me. She went under. What are you talking about? She said through a bubbling flurry. Do we bear repeating? Maybe she's a ditz. Dumber than the polyp inside her. Kimberly resurfaced. Her insides felt as though they'd imploded. What? She exclaimed. What? What did they say? Said Cameron. A dolphin's deformed head emerged near Alex, and its blowhole expunged a bloody plume of vapor directly into his face. Oh, you motherfucker! He rasped. He lifted his arm from the water. Something metallic glinted in his fist. Then he drove the pocket knife into the dolphin's flank. No! Kimberly cried. The creature made a hairpin turn, nearly wrenching Alex's arm from his socket. 
Its mangled jaws locked around his neck and dragged him under. The other two dolphins rocketed forward to join the fray. A lone human hand surfaced, grasping at the air. Then it too was pulled down. Alex's screams were throat-ripping, diminished and muffled from the depths, until the water boiled silently with blood. Go! Cameron yelled, shoving Kimberly toward shore. Swim! Go! Blotting the crimson carnage from her mind, Kimberly strokes forward, Cameron in stride, letting the swell carry them forward, until a hideous gray head surged in front of them, blocking their path forward. The three dolphins regrouped and formed a tighter circle around the two. Their sonar returned, percussive, insistent. Kimberly and Cameron gave each other a morbid look, then, holding on to each other, submerged. You're not going to try that again. We love blood down here. We have business to settle. Cravings to slake. We must answer to instinct. The two resurfaced. Their shared expressions screamed hopelessness as they gazed into each other's eyes. The feeling of two insignificant creatures relegated to playthings for sadistic killers. They said there's a polyp in me, Kimberly said hesitantly. Cameron gasped. One of the dolphins had struck him. Fuck! That one bit me! He hissed. What does it mean? She said. I don't know, he replied, rubbing the bite wound on his thigh. Ask them! Clearly they think it's important. Glaring at him, her heart sinking, Kimberly went under again. Can't risk it. One of them was saying. We might kill her too. But the bull, their bond is strong. He protects her. We can break it. Break him. You mean... Easily. Stop, Kimberly blurted. No, don't kill him. But we must. Rival males spoil the fun. Better now than later. Fatherless calves are easier to dispatch anyway. Much more tender, too. <laughs> And suddenly, she understood. She surfaced and stared gravely at Cameron. She said something in a small voice. What? He asked. She said it again, her voice all but failing her. What? What is it? He said. She took a deep, rattling breath. Pregnant. I'm pregnant. His brow furrowed, his mouth parted wordlessly. They, they... they want to kill it, Kimberly stammered, so they can have me. That's impossible. We haven't... since winter break. Cameron finally sputtered. Last night, she responded, suddenly realizing. Do you remember last night? No. I don't. A dark cloud passed over his face. Oh. Oh shit. No. I don't. Listen, she whispered, placing her hands on his shoulders. They... They want to kill you first. They want to get the bull out of the way. He stared into her eyes, his own welling up. His hand drifted up to hers. Around them, the ring of dolphins tightened. Toying with them was growing stale. He looked past her at the shoreline, a swimming pool's length away, the charred boat still floating in their path. We won't make it in time. He muttered. He gave a trembling sigh. Go. Save yourself. Then, in a frantic motion, he lunged to the side and wrapped his arms around one of the dolphins. 
It kicked off, its trident tail slapping the surface before diving. The other two followed it down. Kimberly wheeled around and swam for her life. Each pump of her arms, each kick of her feet seemed to dislodge gallons of water, rending her a human missile cutting through the sea like air. Their hurtful taunts loomed behind her. They were coming. She glanced up and saw the hull of the boat. Instinct overwhelmed her and she dove. She didn't stop until her forearm scraped the sandy bottom. She propelled herself forward, well under the boat. Her lungs ached. Every molecule begged to resurface, but she didn't stop until the water around her brightened from shallow depths. Finally, she broke the surface in waist-deep water. She half sprinted, half fell for shore, until a rogue wave picked her up and carried her to the beach. Kimberly collapsed on all fours, wheezing and coughing, scooting up the sun-baked sand away from the sea. She felt like a drowned rat, waterlogged and deathly, but the emotional agony in her chest told her she was very much alive. Out past the peninsula, the boat was listing to port, the depth slowly claiming it. Just beyond the blackened hull, three misshapen cetacean heads emerged from the water, their bloodshot eyes bitterly piercing her from over a hundred feet off. Then, they slowly sank into the gloom. The rising tide laughed at Kimberly's feet as she stared out at the horizon. Tears fell. Her pulse was a miserable throb in her throat. The tragedy of the day, the uncertainty of the future, all culminating on the shores of Hell's Gulf. The boat sank entirely. She turned and limped down the shoreline, deciding that, just for now, she would spend a few idyllic moments in the present. Out at sea, the distant silhouette of a dolphin breached. The beach really was quite nice. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.